Oh my god. <laughs> I almost just fell down the stairs. What, that's what I get for trying to start a video um, on the stairs. Not a good idea. But I wanted to make a quick one because um, I just had an idea for a video and, well, like, who needs a schedule, right? So look, I, in the last 30 days of YouTube, have gained 30,000 subscribers and I've basically done it with little to no effort, right? And in this video, I'm going to show you how this, this will help you if you're trying to build an audience or like do anything basically, right? I've got a video idea here on the whiteboard, so I need to rub that off quickly. Um, <laughs> you want to see a funny picture actually? It's not actually that funny at all, to be honest. My family were here recently and my mum drew a picture of us on the board. Don't know if you can see that. Um, she's done myself and my father a, an extreme injustice, but by the way, I'm wet. I just got out of the shower. Look, right. So you want to build an audience. You want to make money. You want to have a good life, blah, blah, blah. Let me part with you some wisdom that might allow you to do this in this very unprofessional, rushed, out of breath, falling down the stairs sense, right? Okay. And by the way, no, I did not pretend to fall down the stairs for comedic purposes. I'm not that sad. Right. Where's my blue pen? I need the blue pen. Here it is. Right. Okay. So Benjamin Graham said to Warren Buffett, probably sometime in the 60s or 50s or the 40s. I don't know how old, right? But definitely the 40s. Maybe the 40s. I don't know. Anyway, right. Graham, Benjamin Graham said to Warren Buffett a quote. He said, the stock market in the short term, in the short term is a voting machine and in the long term is a weighing machine, right? Now, the nature of this quote is very simple. In, in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine or the market is a voting machine. In the long term, it's a weighing machine. What this basically means is that the people who win, the people who grow exponentially, um, they are the ones that add value, right? Because in the short term, the market will essentially vote on what is popular. It will vote on what is shiny. And, you know, in the short term, in business and in YouTube, the channels and the businesses and the people that do well are people that are able to create shiny objects and you know, just basically encapsulate a lot of attention by being popular, right? But on contrast, the people that win are the people that let the march of time do the work for them, right? So look at it like this. The stock market or any market, right? Let's just take the YouTube market because, you know, a market is basically comprised of just a large group of people and YouTube's a pretty large group of people, right? It's hundreds of millions of users. Um, the, the, the market works like this. We have time, right? And then this time elapses. And we, here we have the short term and here we have the long term. The longer that you do your thing for, the more likely you are to succeed, but only if you actually add value. So to put this into perspective, right? And to show you how this has worked for me, um, I've been doing YouTube now pretty much on the dot. I uploaded my first video nearly like a week ago or something, three years ago. So three years has elapsed. And in those three years, in the first two months, right? Sorry, the first two years, two years, and um, 11 months, my channel has gone from zero to 50,000 subscribers, right? So zero to 50K subs in about two, two years and 11 months. But in the last month, the last one month, it's gone from 50,000 subscribers to 80,000 subscribers. So I have nearly, not, not quite, but I've nearly doubled my channel in the last month. And this is called exponential growth, right? You know when you see one of those fancy diagrams that looks like an erection that goes like that? where it's like slow, slow, sudden, sudden explosion. This is exponential growth, right? And the reason this has happened to my channel is because I've been doing it for a long time, right? So a lot of people look at my YouTube in the last month and you might have seen there's some other videos that come out with a similar style. A lot of people are starting to use whiteboards. By the way, I can't lay claim to the whiteboard style. It's Sam Ovens' idea in, from the initial conception, right? Daddy Ovens is the person that basically created this. I'm sure he won't mind me calling him that. But essentially like, you know, it's, you're starting to see lots of people make whiteboard videos, put you know, lowercase titles. I'm not saying I created this stuff. I'm just saying that like, I thought I would try. So what was actually my strategy for achieving this? Because it's kind of weird when someone you know, who's been growing line linearly, deserved line linear growth over time, over three years, and then suddenly out of nowhere, they just go woo, like straight up. But honestly, the thing that I've been doing is putting no effort into my videos. Um, this has really been the key. However, 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 you, if you're gonna put low effort into videos, you need to actually make good videos. What I've learned on YouTube is a good video is a good video. It doesn't matter, like the quality, the, the, the quality production is, is sort of irrelevant. The, um, the title and the thumbnail are also, are important, but they're not like completely relevant, at least to the space that I'm in. And the scripting and all that stuff is just doesn't make any sense, right? In, in, in this YouTube game, we can apply the Pareto principle, where we've got 80-20. 
80% of the success of your content is gonna come from the video itself. How good actually is the thing? How closely in alignment with the truth is it? And how much does it resonate with the actual market? I.e., how much value does it provide? Now, if you want to know how to create value, because really people, what I said earlier, right, about the, the stock market being a, a, a voting machine in the long term, the market, i.e. YouTube's algorithm, the people on YouTube will vote in the long term on channels that have the most value. Well, how do we create value? Well, I've made a few videos on this. We alleviate pain. Value is created when pain is alleviated and pain is alleviated when problems are solved, right? So if your video, if someone watches your video and it actually solves a problem or it gives someone a piece of information, like a, a, a gigabyte of information or a terabyte or a megabyte of information that they watch the video, they download that information through their sensory experience into their brain. They then take that information, they then apply it to their situation and by applying it to their situation, a problem is solved and pain is alleviated and they get closer towards their goal. Human beings, when we set goals, we don't set goals to achieve them, we set them to run away from something. And so really what we're doing by setting a goal and trying to achieve it is running away from pain. Sorry, I'm talking quickly because I, I just can't be bothered to, to make a really long video right now because it's like, what is the time? It's like 11 p.m. Anyway, you get the point, right? So, 80-20. So 80% is about the value of the video, right? This is about coming up with original, creative, good ideas that are clearly explained and properly articulated that are, you know, unique and can't be found anywhere else. That's what I've been doing really in the last, you know, month on my channel. I've had videos randomly get to 300k views, 250k views, 180k views, 140k views, because I've been creating value. And basically what I've done, my strategy has been to create videos that you can't find anywhere else, maybe with a few exceptions on Sam Evans' channel, right? I've been making videos that I haven't copied from someone, that I haven't emulated, that I haven't just stolen, although some of my ideas have blatantly come from Sam's channel, which I will put my hands up and blatantly admit, I don't care. But everybody focuses on 20%. 20% is the title, right? The thumbnail. You know, it's the editing. You know, it's the jump cuts. It's, it's the background. You know, people focus on the mic. They focus on the camera, you know, all of this stuff. There's a few other things. People put all of their attention into like, you know, the 20% of what actually gets a video good results. What really gets a video good results in the long term, this is the key, the long term is the value. And this is a lesson for YouTube, but also for any business, right? You know, the reason my channel suddenly exploded, I've been doing this for three years. I've been making, you know, one to three videos a week. I've made like 330 videos, long form videos. And if you do something like that and you put, you know, a thousand hours of practice into a specific task, you're gonna get quite good. And then suddenly out of nowhere, you're gonna be able to make videos like this one, just off the cuff out of the shower because you had an idea. And, it, and then everybody looks at your channel you know, and this is where people make the mistake. They look at your channel, right? They focus, for, first of all, the mistake they make is focusing on the stuff that doesn't really matter. Um, but the mistake they will make is, it, let's say that this is my channel, right? And it's gone, 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 and it's just exploded like this, right? Just sudden exponential erection-like growth, right? We'll call it that, for lack of better words, to be crude. Um, so yeah, this is zero months, right? And this is 36 months, right? So in the last, let's just say that this time from allocating, you know, the last 30 days, I've gone from, 80, from, from 50K subs to 80K subs. And when you watch this video, maybe I'll have 100K or maybe, maybe my channel will not have grown at all and I'm completely wrong, right? But people, like, what people are doing right now, and I've, I've observed this with people copying my videos, and I don't, I don't care, right? I have no ego attached to someone taking an idea that's working. I've done it myself in plenty of videos before, blatantly sometimes. So, like, I'm not in any way, shape, or form, like, upset by that. It's just the nature of the game, right? But what a lot of people are doing is they're looking at, you know, they're looking at the external stuff that I've been doing in the last month. Now, admittedly, I've changed my style of content in the last month and I've, be, I've made some decisions for my YouTube channel and the trajectory of it, which have massively increased my subscribers, right? But what they haven't done is they've looked at, you know, they've looked at what's happened here in the last 30 days and they're trying to emulate and copy, once again, I don't care, like, and, and it's, it's perfectly normal. I'm not saying everyone's trying to copy me and I'm the be all end all grandiose person on YouTube, but people are looking at what I've been doing in the last month to, you know, try and to develop a strategy to grow the YouTube channel, right? And then this is true, a lot of my clients have been doing it, I don't care. But what they failed to see is, you know, really the last, um, well, let's say, how many videos have we done? The last 10 videos that I've made have done really well in contrast to my previous videos, right? So they are looking at the last 10 videos I've made, but what they're not seeing is the previous 310 videos that didn't necessarily do that well. And so when people try and copy my style or try and make similar videos based on the last 10 videos, they kind of miss the point because the only reason I'm able to make good, unique, authentic, original videos is because I've done hundreds and hundreds of kind of just not, not terrible ones, but not amazing ones that deserve to blow up. In, in business, you get what you deserve, right? So this is the same thing. You could look at Warren Buffett's net worth over time, right? Where Warren Buffett's net worth just randomly out of nowhere just went whoosh, like big old big bang scale, right? Warren Buffett, 
amazing guy, right? And people are looking at his investment strategy for now. So what they're doing is they're looking at Warren Buffett in the last five years and thinking, wow, well, how did he go from like 60 billion to like 103 billion in like a year? That's crazy growth. But they're looking and trying to copy and emulate his strategy for what he's done in the last year. But it really, what has driven this growth is what he did in the last 50. So you can read Warren Buffett's letters to shareholders from Berkshire Hathaway. So whenever you're looking at someone that's just gone boom, like out of nowhere, just completely blown their channel up or their business up, try to avoid shiny objecting to what they've been doing in the last month or the last year that's massively burned them up and look at what they've been doing for years and years on end before you know the sudden the sudden big bang invasion right you know it's kind of important that's how i did it bye